Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we're continuing learning Python and today we will add users to our exchange. So let's start. We're going to use FastAPI users library in order to do that, so in order to add our user system. And uh, let's just go to our code. Alright, so here is our project. I'm going to open up main.py and um, today we're going to add FastAPI users to our project. Of course, we're not going to finish with the, all of the user routes, all of the user management things, but we're going to start the foundation for our users in the future. And that's a really, really important, important video for our project, because before that we did not expose any direct dependencies. So if we look, if we look at our main.py, API has a function called run API. Database connection has create database connection and we don't impose any explicit dependencies. And why is it so great? Because if I want to change, for example, fast API that we are using in our API file right now. So if I want to change first API to Flask, what I can actually do is just go to that API folder and change everything which is related to API itself, to the first API to Flask. And I will not change anything in the database, in migrations, in main.py or anywhere else. So I only need to change the folders, the files that are directly related to the thing that I'm about to change. For example, if I want to change database ORM system from Tortoise ORM that we're using right now to SQL Alchemy that we may use in the future, what I can actually do is just go to database and change everything there. I don't, don't need to change API to touch main.py or anything else. That's really, really important because now our project is completely independent. However, we're going to add fast API users. And it's not that like each library will add dependencies. Of course it will. So each library that you install for your project will add another dependency or even dependencies. The thing is, we have fast API in the in the name of that library, fast API users. So it already tells us that we're going to use fast API as a system to work with our work with our API. So as a system that will handle all of the requests. And uh, that may be not that great for some projects because if you really want to change if you really want to create an independent project, then it's going to be really, really hard for you. And I wrote independent projects before, so the projects that didn't have any direct dependencies and it was, was not that great. So you need to have at least some dependencies in order to have a man maintainable console. It's not like a requirement, but uh, it is what it is. So you, you're going to have dependencies and nothing is very inherently bad with that, but yeah. I'm just saying that first API users already exposes a really, really big dependency in our project, first API. All right, so first API users is a library that allows us to work with the users. I'm on their GitHub AO site, so on their documentation site, I'm going to go to installation and here we have four different ORMs, so SQL Alchemy, MongoDB, ODM in our case, Ormar and Tortoise ORM. In our case, we're going to install Tortoise ORM, let me open up my terminal and then we just paste it here. And as I found out, you need to remove those things. I forgot how to how they are called. Um, yeah, you just need to write pip install first API first API users or to user M without any yeah, without any quotes. Yeah. Without any quotes because somehow they do not work with them. All right, and then I'm gonna exit. But before I exit, of course, I need to remember to do pip freeze to requirements.txt. Maybe we need to set up another requirement management system, but uh, for now let's just use pfreeze. All right, so we installed our library and let's go to config configuration and overview because overview contains the schema of the whole library. How does it work? So I'm just gonna try to explain how does it happen, how we will work with our users, but it may not be right for all the cases. So database adapters are the classes that allow us to work with different databases. So I think you heard about adapter pattern and I have a video on that pattern. And um, we have SQL Alchemy, MongoDB, Tortoise ORM. So in our case, we chose Tortoise ORM as our ORM and uh, we're going to use that class with the function getUserDB and it's going to be supplied to user manager. Aside from the database adapter, we're going to have models. And it's really, really important because those models are not the models in the database. Those are Pydantic schemas. So Pydantic is a library that allows you to work with uh, serialization in Python. So you can have JSON object and you can 
create a schema. So it's called a model, but I call it a schema and I'll explain why a little bit later. But you can create a pedantic base model in order to serialize your JSON objects into Python objects and uh, vice versa. So from Python to JSON. It's really, really popular library and FastAPI uses it. So we're going to use it as well. FastAPI users, yeah, FastAPI itself uses it and FastAPI users allows us to work with that library as well because those models are pedantic models and they are supplied to the user manager, which is uh, supplied to FastAPI users using get user manager function. And um, FastAPI users is our like our object that we're going to work with in order to create all the routes, in order to set up our, like it's our main object. Yeah, first API users. And also we have authentication backend. So authentication backend is the thing that we're going to use in the next video. So the video after that, because um, we're going to talk about cookie transport, bureau transport and GVT strategies in order to prevent any security issues with our project. So authentication backend is, um, a class that allows you to authenticate your users and you need to provide two things, transports and strategies. So transport is how you transfer your authentication. Yeah, very complicated work. So how you transfer your tokens, how you transfer your session, so how you authenticate your user, how do you transport it? And strategy is how do you create it, how do you store it and so on. So in our case, transport can be cookie transport and we're going to add our tokens to cookies or barrier transport and we're going to add them to headers. There are other transports there like, I think, um, I think, I think, I think, well, I don't remember, but there are other transports there. And we also have strategies, GVT strategy, ready strategy, database strategy. So how do we store and how do we create our tokens? Well, mainly how do we store them? And those are provided to the notification backend, which allows us to authenticate our users. And then we have routes. So routes for first API and current user is a dependency that we're going to talk about a little bit later. That's how the library works. You can read about all of that here, but um, let's go to models. And uh, here we're going to have the first look at our user model. So let's go a little bit here. I'm going to just copy that code and uh, I'm going to create a new Python package called users. Oh, sorry async. I don't know why did that happen. I'm going to create a new packet Python package called users and um, yeah, don't ask again. Let's add it to the git. And here I'm going to create a new Python file called models. Or let me actually call it schemas. And I'm going to paste everything here. So schemas and models, what is the dis distinction between those? In Pydantic, once again, Pydantic library, let me just show you. By identity, we have something called models. So if I want to create, let me create like a product model, what I'm going to do is call identity.base model. And there is nothing wrong with that. However, as I found out, it's really, really inconvenient to call identity models, models, and our database models, models. So we have the same name for tortoise or M models that we are use that we are using in order to connect to our database. And that's really, really inconvenient. So it can be misleading, like what model are you talking about? And that is why I'm always calling my Pydantic modus schemas. So for Pydantic, it's going to be a schema, but it's a model. I'm not going to change anything that it's just like my own noun for that um, class for the for those things. So Pydantic schemas, but database models. And that way we're going to have like very, very yeah, very, very obvious distinction between models and schemas. So schemas are the objects that work with JSON and Python objects and models are the objects that work with objects and database objects. Yeah, and by objects, I uh, suppose the Python objects, so Python classes, Python objects and so on. All right, so now I think, you know, that we're just going to call everything that works with the database model, everything that works with JSON serialization and all that stuff, schema. And in our case, all of those are schemas. So my credit schemas.py and uh, from first API users, we import models and we have base user, base user create, update and base user DB. So user update, create DB and just user. What is the difference? The difference is that base user is, uh, let me go to the, yeah, to the parent class is um, just a model from Pydantic. So as you can see, it's, it's really a Pydantic model. Yeah, nothing very fancy here. 
and the user model allows us to work with the JSON representation of our users. User create allows us to work with the with the users that we want to register. So we want to create users, register them, and user create will allow us to do that. User update allows us to update our user information. And user DB is a special schema that um, stores our user. So as you can see, it inherits from a user class. And also it stores model-based user DB. But that user DB schema, it's not a model, it's a schema. It, it is not related to Tortoise RM directly. However, what we're going to do here is, uh, let me just go a little bit. All right, we, we don't have it here. We are going to have it in the next um, in the next page of that documentation. But user DB is basically going to be a connector between our database model and between our Pydantic schema. Why is that? Because Pydantic is a really popular library and Tortoise ORM and other ORMs as well allow you to create Pydantic schemas in just one function. So in you don't need to write class, schema, and then from Pydantic based model and do all of that stuff. What you need to do is actually just create your uh, object. And then if the library has uh, Pydantic support encoded, then you can just call one function and you're going to have a JSON representation of your object. So instead of writing your own schemas, instead of writing your own validators, what you can do is actually map your objects to your schemas. I think you know what I mean. If you worked with um, Django, for example, Django REST framework, you have something called Modo Serializers. And Modo Serializers is basically a serializer that maps to your model. The same goes for here. You have a schema that is mapped to your Tortoiseware model, to your SQL Alchemy model, and other things. And that is very, very convenient for us. Because of that, we want to create user DB quest that is going to connect or adapt our user DB, or sorry, our user and our our user schema and our user model. Yeah, like that. All right, but what we're going to do here is um, before we go to the next uh, section of the documentation, I'm just going to add a new field here called username, username string. So I'm basically saying that aside from the fields that I did not show you, we have uh, four fields here or five fields here. ID, which is a UUID for so unique identifier of a user email our email is active is verified is super user we're going to use all of those but uh, as you can see those are not database fields so str boo uuid4 those are python python types and um, that suggests that base user is not a model it's really a schema from pydantic because if you worked with pydantic you probably used or well, you're not probably you definitely used that uh, yeah those annotations as type checkers all right so now we added our user username to our base user. And what I want to do in, advan in advance is create a field. Let me import it from Pydantic field. And um, what I'm going to put here is uh, min length. So field is a special, I don't know how to say it, modifier. It is a special object. Uh, it's a special thing that allows you to describe your fields to add uh, some to describe your fields, to add anything to your field. So in our case, we're going to have min length to our username field, and it's going to be 10. Let me copy that and let me paste it to user create because we need to have it in user create and user update as well. But there is a problem with our code right now. So what, what's the problem? What, what do you think? Well, the problem is that we copy min length, so not min length, but the value itself, 10, two, three separate three separate classes and uh, it's not like a really big problem that we copy that value the real problem is that we just have the value 10 we don't have any variable which is related to that value and it's really really bad if you just put variables in your code like 10 or 4 or 5 or hello or yes something like that then it's not going to be very convenient for you to change those variables in the future what i'm going to do instead of just putting 10 here is i'm going to do that if you want to do the same, just press out and uh, it will work for you in PyCharm. Well, what happened? Let me do it like that. Yeah, all right. You can just press out and um, yeah, put your mouse on that, 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 if you want to do the same. And what I'm going to do here is settings dot mean username length. And I'm going to import settings as well. That's how it works. Let's copy 
min username length. Let's go to settings. And here we're going to have min username length one time, which is going to be end int from min username length. So end.int is um, a function that allows you to get an integer representation of your environment variable. We worked with environs in the first in the first video of that series, and uh, yeah, I also oh yeah, I already have min username went. I think I have it from my Russian version of that video. So yeah, min username username went is going to be ten. All right, so min username went is set up. Now we don't have any problems with our schemas yet. If we're going to add a lot of fields in our field object, then we're going to have a problem that we copy those fields. But it's not a problem for now, so let's just leave it as it is. All right. Let's go to the documentation and uh, we don't have anything important here aside from the fact that we added our fields, we added our models, our schemas, sorry, and let's go to database adapters. We're going to use Tortoise ORM here because that's the ORM that we chose. You can install a SyncPG, IO MySQL, IO SQLite, whatever you like. If you, if you did not install uh, Tortoise ORM in the last video because we used Tortoise ORM to connect to the database and we installed a sync Postgres. So we don't need to do that. And uh, the next thing is, as you can see, user model. So user model is a model already. So it's not like a schema. It's really a model from Tortoise RAM. Let's copy that user model and let's create a new file in users called models. I'm going to paste my user model here and I'm going to import Tortoise RAM, Tortoise based user model. All right, so we don't need to add anything here, but look at user DB. What do we have? We have config, which has ORM mode true and org model as user model. So that is a tortoise ORM specific setting. And we have also pydentic model here. So yeah, that's a tortoise ORM specific setting because it tells us that um, we, have, uh, we have a config configuration class that allows us to get our tortoise ORM objects and translate them to pydentic schemas. And org model is like your original model, or M mode is, uh, if you want to, I don't remember what the setting stands for, but uh, I think if you want to use, yeah, use it with ORM or not, I don't know. But those settings are in um, Tortoise ORM, and I think we're going to use them a little bit later for our own models. But for now, let's just copy it. And let's go to user DB in schemas. Here, I'm going to paste them. And uh, basically, that's it. But we also need to import user model from our models.py class, or models.py file, sorry. What I'm going to do instead is create get user model function, which is just going to return my user model like that. I'm going to use it because I don't want to use my model directly. If something will change, we are just going to use the model that is returned in get user model here. But for now, let's just return that user model. All right, and that's basically it. Yeah, so we created our user model, which is related to Tortoise ORM, and our user DB works as a special class that allows us to connect Tortoise ORM and Pydentic. Right, so let's go a little bit lower. Yeah, we don't have anything. We also need to add Pydentic model here, and uh, it is imported from Tortoise country Pydentic. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, let's, let's do it kind of like do we need to do it? Do we need to do it? What does Pydentic model bring to the table? Pydentic model. Let's quickly import it. I don't want to do it because we show Tortoise ORM dependency here. And uh, Pydentic model, ORM mod true, Pydentic base for Tortoise objects. Well, yeah, we need to use it. Mm. All right, let's just leave it like that for now because uh, because of what? Hmm, we don't have any direct any direct um, thing in here. So let's instead of doing that, instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is create a new Python package called common. Or I don't need to create a Python package, let's just create a file called um, common models. I don't know, common models, which is gonna have our Pydentic model as defined yet Pydentic model like that and let's return our Pydentic model. Why I'm doing that? Because I don't want to really impose any direct dependencies in our schemas because schemas is basically our 
schemas, our REST API schemas and our Pydensic schemas. And if we don't have anything which is related to the fast API or sorry to the tortoise or M here, it's going to be better. I'm not sure if we're going to need to call that get Pydensic Pydensic model function directly and it's going to be very convenient for us. But for now, let's just do it. Let's just do it for now and we're going to change it in the future if we really need to. The same goes with models and get user model here. All right, so we created our Pydensic model, so we added it to our user DB. And now the only thing that is left to do is create our database adapter. So database adapter is, as you remember, the class that allows us to work with the database. It is provided or supplied in the user manager. And I'm going to create a new file called adapters in my users. Dot, in my users, yeah, adapter. And um, let's just copy that code. And I'm going to tell you what we can improve here. So we copy a lot of code today, but it's just for now we're gonna, yeah, because it's like a, a library setup, so there is nothing to do ourselves. And instead of going for user model from here, I'm gonna use get user model. So user model in our Tortoise user database is gonna be replaced by get, by get user model. And user DB, let's go to schemas and let's create our function which works the same get user schema. And let's just return our user DB. I'm going to go to adapters and um, get user schema like that and let's import it. That's how it works. So now we have our get and let's call it get user adapter. All right, so we now have our get user adapter function which generates our tortoise user database and that's an object that is uh, responsible for working with our tortoise ORM. And we have get user schema which returns our user DB schema from here and we also have our get user model which returns our user model to our adapter class so that's how it works user adapter will allow us to connect to the manager and really work with the tortoise ORM we have registered tortoise here but we already did it before before that video because we connected our ORM in the last in the last chapter and um, now let's go to notification backends and we're going to finish our video here because Authentication backend is a really, really important thing that we need to consider because if our users will have security problems in our financial applications, that's going to be a disaster because they can lose their money and we can go to courts, which we don't want that. So we're just going to be very, very careful with our with our notification backends. And because of that, I'm gonna create a video, like a separate video on what's better for notification in a backend. We also have uh, all the things here. So I think I'm gonna use them as well. So yeah, but um, for now, what we, are, what we have is we have an adapter, schemas and models, which are very, very split between each other and it's gonna help us in the long run. So thank you for watching. My name is Andrew. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment and wait for the next video to understand what's really the best way to authenticate your user in a web application. So thank you for watching and bye bye.